Okay, so you're gonna type in your scenario over here to the right, and then as we're used to seeing, it's gonna retrieve the results and show them down at the bottom, where I'm gonna show you the first thing that's a little bit different. So the first thing you're gonna see is the push button. This is brand new. If you click on the push button, it's gonna give you this box that gives you a few options. Let me explain what, how each of these work. Confirm and lock is exactly what it used to show you before the push button exists. So most of you, when you click on confirm and lock, it's gonna go ahead and take you right to the lender's website. So for instance, we're on Bank of America Correspondent up here. If I click on this, um, well, actually, I apologize. <laughs> For those of, those of you that have a normal account, that's what it's going to do. What I have is I have the lock feature, and any of you can enable this if you want to. You can let me know. There's no additional charge for it. What it is is it's basically utilizing a lock desk feature inside our system. We just have to turn it on where you can basically communicate with either a lock desk, if you guys work that way, or maybe a processor that also has an account. And you can send a note. Um, you can put the borrower's, you know, maybe ID or loan number. You can also send attachments through here, so you can even send a 1003. So it's just a real easy way through our system to sort of track your deals. Um, so if that's enabled, that's what will open. Otherwise, if you click on this, it will open up your lender's website. Okay, internal email. Um, we tried to put a little reminder to let you know about this. I'll get to it in a second. But basically, this allows you to send this little scenario to anyone you want. You can send it to an AE. Now, many of you, and you'll see I don't have any in here, this little piece in here, you can fill this out. You can click on here to update it. Um, you can put your AE's contact information. So if you have an email address in here, it will link and it will automatically send an email to that person. If you don't, you can go ahead and you can just type in the email address here or you can send it to yourself as well if you want to keep track of what the deal was. Go ahead and test it if you guys want to. Send one to yourself. You can see exactly what the email looks like. It basically gives you a snapshot of what the scenario looks like and then it gives you the pricing underneath it so you can see the whole thing. Now, one thing we're reminding you up here, please be advised that this email will include the lender's name and the YSP. So if you want to send this to your borrowers, you can, but just be prepared that you don't always want to tell them your YSP and you don't always want to tell them who the lender is. So we just want to warn you at this point. Now, there's perhaps a chance in the future where we may add the ability to send out an email to your borrowers right from here, but right now it doesn't. So that really wasn't the creation here. We just want you to be aware so that you don't accidentally send it to your borrower and then be upset that these pieces of information were in there. So just a little warning. Okay, a couple other things, email campaign. We'll get to this in a couple days when I do the email campaign, but when you click on this, it allows you to push this into an email campaign you maybe have already created. And again, I'll walk you through this on the uh, webinar I, I do in a couple of days, but here's how you're gonna push that through. Um, you can also send it into reports. Um, we will be enabling um, your open house flyers, which is included in the reports. That will be turning on for you probably within the next week. We'll be sending out more information about it. So just wanted to show you that's how you send that. Um, and then today's rates is a, an additional feature. You send this in a very similar fashion. This is an add-on piece that I'm gonna do a webinar on later in the week um, that talks about how you can post rates to your website directly and they're linked through here. So that's just, uh, just wanted to give you a quick explanation of what these push options are. So those do now exist, which are great. Um, all right, so first thing you need to learn how to do if you haven't done it before is saving your scenarios. So once you've run it and you get your results, you're gonna click on save. This box is gonna open up. Now I've already saved this so it's filled out. Really all you need to fill out is your scenario name, which I always suggest you put the product type and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, put your borrower's first and last name. You can put as much contact information as you want, but I would always suggest starting with an email address as well because it'll make the process a little bit easier for you later when you decide to send an email campaign to your borrower. Now, if you don't have a contact already attached, um, so let's say it was blank, just like this, you can select from um, your contacts. So it might be a contact you've already used. You can select them or you can click on this little plus button and that's what will open up this piece down here to allow you to figure this out. You scroll down, you click save, and it's going, going to go ahead and it's going to save it right up here to the left hand side. Again, works very similarly to the old version that we had. Um, we get a little bit more information here. So the first thing you're going to notice is it gives you the rate and the rebate or the YSP right now. You used to have to put your mouse over it. Um, here's the borrower. If I click on this, it's going to take me directly to the contact page, which is nice. 
Um, here's the, a little scenario. If you click on this, it's going to open the scenario like I did earlier. But if you put your mouse over, it's going to give you a little bit more information. So you can see the original lender when I first ran this search was Bank of America Correspondent. Here was the rate and here was the price. Based against today, the current pricing is also Bank of America Correspondent. Here's the pricing, so it's obviously gotten better. Um, and sorry, and you can see right over here, that's the exact same pricing that you see in this box. Now there's a couple things you can do in here that you couldn't do before. You can add a note. So if you click on add a note, it's going to open up the ability for you to type in whatever note you'd like. You can see you can add this note to either the contact or to the scenario. The way that works is, you know, maybe you have multiple scenarios for one borrower and you just want to add this note for that one scenario. Or you can say, I want to add it to every deal I have in here for this borrower. So if you select contact, like you'll notice over here, I have two Amanda Haywards. It'll, that same note will show up under both of her scenarios as opposed to just saying, I want it on this one. So it just gives you the, um, the flexibility to use it however you'd like. So you can save that note right there and then you can view your notes right here. Um, reset tracking and stop monitoring. These are important when you're tracking your deals. So for instance, tracking means we're telling you what the original rate was up here and then what today's was. So you're tracking it. You can stop that tracking or stop the monitoring. Um, so if I were to click this, it would be stopped and then it would allow you to turn it back on from here. You can also reset your tracking. So perhaps I talked to this borrower three months ago and I've been tracking based off the rate three months ago, but you'd rather track off, off of today's rates. You don't really want to track off of back then. So you can go ahead and click reset tracking and it will immediately use today's pricing as that original pricing. So when you check back tomorrow or next week, it'll now track against today's pricing. So that gives you that ability. So like I said, you can click on this, it'll open up your full scenario, but if you just hover your mouse over it is when this box appears. Now the other thing we've added is we show you where these deals are. So you can notice there's an F here, that's in your float monitor, um, P is in your prospect, um, R is in your refi, and then your, there's your locked as well. So it shows you where you're housing these deals. Now the important piece is how do you get them there? So you've run your scenario, you've clicked save, let's go ahead and do this just so I get one into my prospect monitor right now. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my contact, I'm just going to put this as a test. Oops. Test. Test. And I'm going to go ahead and click save. Okay. So now when we look up, we've got test, test. That's the one I just saved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to our prospect monitor where you can see that. Oh, so I'm going to go ahead and in your monitor, I'm going to go to my prospect monitor. This is where every new saved search will automatically land. So if you're ever looking for where it went when you just first saved it, it's in your prospect monitor. So here's two in here. Now you notice we've got a float monitor, a lock monitor, a refi monitor. Most of these work very similar. So I'm just going to show you in here, here's a new scenario that we have. We've got what the original pricing was and then all lenders now, we've got the best pricing today. It's the same information you saw on that front page. Now what you can do is you can move this through to different pages. So in your prospect monitor, you're not really tracking anything except for against the very first day you talk to the borrower. So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to float this deal. So maybe you're submitting the deal, um, but you haven't yet locked a rate. So I'm going to click floating. And it's going to go ahead and immediately took it out of this. So I'm going to go into my float monitor and now we're going to see that deal. down here we go okay I think this is the one I just moved over so we just moved this into our float monitor now's where you're gonna start your tracking this is the important piece so what we've got is we have a global float trigger setting what this means globally it means it's going to apply to every single deal in the float monitor and I'll tell you how you can avoid that later but so every single one of these deals we're telling it based on the rate anytime the current rate is a quarter less than the rate when I first ran the deal. So we're tracking for a quarter betterment in the rate. Anytime it gets a quarter better, it's gonna shoot me an email. And you can see up here, I've already put my email in here, so go ahead and put your email in that place and go ahead and hit save. I suggest you do the HTML, but if you have trouble reading HTML emails, you can go ahead and use the short version. But I always start with this one, it's a little bit prettier. So put your email in and click save. The system is automatically gonna email you anytime a rate gets a quarter better. Now notice it allows you to set based on different types of products. So maybe on a fixed, I wanna know when it gets a quarter, but on an arm, I wanna know when it gets a half better, whatever the reason is. Now, let's say this particular scenario 
You don't even need it to drop by a quarter. Maybe you just need it to drop by an eighth. So you can set on individual trigger and put right in here, 0.125, save. That means for this individual deal, I want to be notified when it drops by an eighth. But every other deal under the global float trigger, it's now going to track for that quarter under the fixed. So here's how you can start to track this, and you will be sent an email that gives you basically this information. It'll tell you the borrower, it'll tell you what the original rate and rebate was on the first day you ran it, and then it'll tell you what the better price is today. So this is a great way to start tracking your borrowers. So let's say you talk to somebody, you're on your search page, you run them, and let's say maybe their cur the current rate for their scenario is five and a quarter, Go, and they really want to get down to five. So you save the scenario. You move over into here, into your prospect monitor, move it over into your float monitor, and then set that individual trigger to let you know when it drops by that quarter or whatever it is to get to the rate that they're searching for. And again, it'll shoot you an email as soon as it hits the rate you're looking for.